In this problem, we have to answer uh, various questions. This is a nice problem because um, it just it, there's a lot here. So we'll start by clicking this little icon uh, to make everything bigger. And notice that the first part wants the domain. So the domain of a function is the set of all inputs. It's all of the x's that you plug in that give you y values. So no matter what x we pick here, for example, if I pick this x here, negative 3, I get a y value. If I pick an x over here, I get a y value. If I pick an x, like say 10, I get a y value that's off the screen. So no matter what x I pick, uh, we always get a y value. So you can pick any single x and get a y value. So you, all real numbers is the domain. So we want the answer in interval notation. So that would be negative infinity, comma to infinity. So again, the domain is all of the inputs. It's all of the x values that you plug in that give you y values. Good job. All right, we want the range now. The range is all the possible y values. You want to go from the bottom up for the range. So the smallest y value here appears to be negative 1. And then the graph goes up this way and it stops at 8. But over here, it keeps going forever. So it looks like it's going to be negative 1 to infinity. Okay, so negative 1 to infinity. And we use a bracket at the negative 1 because it's included. There's no hole there. So negative 1 to infinity and in parentheses. Nice work. The x-intercepts. The x-intercepts uh, are where the graph crosses the x-axis or touches it. It looks like 2 and 4 are the x-intercepts. That's where the graph touches or crosses the x-axis. 2 and 4. Okay, so 2 and 4. It says the left 0 of the function is 2 and the right 0 is, so that would be 4. Good stuff. What is the y-intercept? So let's click the little magnifying glass. The y-intercept is where it touches or crosses the y-axis, so right here at 8. So 8 is the y-intercept. So the answer here is 8. On what interval is the function increasing? Let's go back to our graph. So when you're thinking about increasing, decreasing, or constant, you want to go left or right. So here it's constant. So from negative infinity to 0, it's constant. Here it's decreasing. So from 0 to 3, it's decreasing. And then here it's increasing. So from 3 to infinity, it's increasing. Notice all of the answers I said were in x values. We always describe what's happening to a function in x values. So from 3 to infinity, the y values are getting bigger or increasing. So it'd be 3 to infinity. And as a general rule, we always use parentheses for increasing and decreasing, no matter what. The next one wants to know where it's decreasing. Going back to our graph, we can see it's getting smaller here. The y values are going down. That happens from 0 to 3. So from 0 to 3, the y values get smaller. So always parentheses for increasing, decreasing. 0 to 3, y values get smaller. Hurrah! On what interval is it constant? So let's go back to our graph. So constant is where it's not changing. So from negative infinity to 0, it's a horizontal line. It's constant. So negative infinity to 0. So negative infinity to 0. And it's parentheses. What is the number at which f has a relative maximum? Minimum. Minimum. Sorry. Minimum. So the minimum value is the smallest y value, if any. So the relative minimum just means it's smaller than the points around it. So this y value here, negative 1, is smaller than the points around it. So it's called a relative minimum. Relative to the points around it, this is the smallest y value, negative 1. The question didn't want that, though. The question said, what is the number at which f has a relative minimum? So the minimum is the smallest y value, so it's negative 1 here. So that occurs or happens at x equals 3. So at x equals 3, the function has a relative minimum. So the answer is x equals 3. See, it's asking where it happens. So whenever you're talking about what happens to a function, you always reply with, with x values. Okay? Then it says the relative minimum, well, we know that's going to be negative 1. That's, that's the smallest y value in that area. So negative 1 is the relative minimum. And it says, what is f of 0? So f of 0 
is the y value when x is 0. So when x is 0, the y value is 8. That actually happens to be the y-intercept. So f of 0 is the y value when x is 0. So the y value when x is 0 is 8. So the answer is 8. That's a lot of questions in this problem. <laughs> The values of x for which f of x equals 3. So these are going to be um, the x values for which y is equal to 3. So I wish I could draw on this, but I can't. So here's y equals 3. And so the first x value where y is 3 is 1. The next one is 5. So x equals 3 is this horizontal invisible line right here. So y, y equals 3, rather, is this, this line. Pretend there's a line here. So at y equals 3, x is 1, and at y equals 3, x is 5. So 1 and 5. 1 and 5. I might say, why am I saying y? Because f of x is equal to y. So it's basically asking us, when is, when is the y value equal to 3? So when x is 1 and when x is 5. Ooh, I got it wrong. Let's see what I do wrong. Let me go back. Oh, I see what I did. It wants the rightmost x value. I didn't read the question. <laughs> well, we have more than one try. So the rightmost x value is 5. Good stuff. Now we want to know uh, if it's even, odd, or neither, or neither. So even means, let me go back to the picture. So graphically, even would mean that uh, it's symmetric about the y-axis, so like an upside-down parabola or just a regular parabola or like an absolute value function, something that's symmetric about the y-axis. So it's definitely not even. And then odd functions always have to pass through the origin, so because uh, they're symmetric about the origin. This, this, this function is not even remotely passing through, through the origin. So uh, in this case, uh, it's neither or neither. And that's it.